for these large health systems, most of the practice of medicine is at best a break-even proposition. Uh, and for most, it's a it's a lost leader to get folks into other revenue streams. And as such, you know, that that's fine for them. But all I have to sell on a clinical level is my expertise and my relationships. And if I'm working for somebody for whom, eh, you know, it's a lost leader. We don't really care about that. Well, how am I going to maximize my value? And how am I going to maximize the value to my patients? And, and how am I going to maximize my, my life? Welcome to the Licensed to Live show, where professionals, doctors, champions, VIPs, attorneys, and those in public office discover strategies that help you restart and gain what is lost when you find yourself accused. If another has doubted your integrity, questioned your credentials, or caused your actions to come under scrutiny, you are in the right place. On the other hand, if you have never felt the knot in the pit of your stomach when legal papers are served, the heartbreak of disappointing your family when the lock clicks shut on handcuffs, or had to appear before a board of review, then be aware, the longer you serve, the more likely you are to find yourself under the microscope of those who judge. Prepare yourself for this uncomfortable possibility. Now, here's your host, Dr. Jarrett Patton. Welcome to this episode of Licensed to Live. My name is Dr. Jarrett Patton, and I am your host for our journey together today and every day you choose to listen to this show. If you or anyone you know has been dissed in their career, please invite them to join us along this journey. Just go to your favorite podcast player and subscribe to Licensed to Live. Now, when I say dissed, I mean displaced. Like, I can't believe that I was let go after I worked so hard for this place. Disgruntled, like, I have to see how many infectious patients without proper protection and no hazard pay, or disenfranchised, like I was when I had my medical license temporarily suspended. Today, we will be talking with Dr. Tom Davis, a family physician, a consultant, an author, and a mentor, and he brings value to nearly everything he does. So you stay tuned for this great episode. And now, a word from our sponsor. Emmett Hayes the Third Coffee Company, EH3, specializes in selecting 100% Arabica coffee beans from distinct coffee growing regions across the globe. EH3 Coffee Company offers an exclusive brand of organic coffee beans and blends. All coffee products are craft roasted to perfection, which yields consistency and quality, taste, and optimal flavor. EH3's quest is to create an evolutionary coffee experience for every single customer, every single time. Get your coffee today at emmettscoffee.com. That's E-M-M-I-T-T-S-C-O-F-F-E-E.com. Welcome to License to Live, Tom. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Jarrett. It's a privilege to be here. Well, I'm, I'm definitely happy to have you here today. You have a long history as a consultant helping people set up and deliver value and care almost on every different level. So really, before we even get started, I want to let all the fire starters out there know what did you do and what happened when you started making that transition out of clinical medicine? Well, uh, I came out of uh, family medicine residency in 1994 and joined a single specialty uh, family medicine group in rural Missouri about the same time that we also gained access to one of the very first total risk Medicare Advantage contracts offered anywhere in the country. And the reason why we had access to it, and remember this is 1994, 95, uh, the big people looked at it, the big boys looked at it, and they, they couldn't make heads or tails of it. So, you know, it went down to us. And uh, my partners and I, we looked at the contract, we tore it apart. And 18 years later, we sold the health system that we created to a, a regional uh, healthcare system for $132 million. 
And uh, although wow. the number is meant as a credibility tool, Dr. Jarrett, to, to open doors to the business community, really what uh, makes me most proud is, is that we created something that our patients valued so greatly that it was it was recognized. And, and for those 18 years that I practiced family medicine, I was completely autonomous. I was paid based on the value I generated, uh, which meant I was paid based on the depth of the relationships with my patients. And I didn't realize it at the time, fool that I was, but uh, it was it was like dancing on air. It was wonderful. So um, so after uh, after that sale, I had a personal service agreement for a while and realized pretty quickly that uh, the corporate world was not a good fit for me. So I started going around the country and uh, and working with other health systems, individual doctors and insurers about how to replicate our success. And during that time, I discovered a couple of things. One is that uh, when you are doing business consulting inside a captured industry like healthcare, value is actually generated by the relationships among the senior leadership and the board members with their payers and with each other. I mean, there's a great deal of back scratching, uh, non-financial uh, quid pro quos and mm-hmm. blatant payoffs that go on, which uh, actually uh, generate more quote unquote value for the organization than anything operational that I can uh, instill. And although I, I did very well, um, that was very disillusioning, especially when the doors were closed and being a business consultant who's also a doctor, I was, I was kind of left as a fly on the wall and, and seeing the behavior and the attitudes of the senior leaders of the health systems uh, and the like uh, towards their frontline troops was uh, jaw dropping, even for a man of uh, my massive cynicism. Uh, I, I was stunned at the complete and total lack of uh, consideration and the business plan basically to work their clinicians to death until uh, until they can be discarded. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I was hesitant. I've been hesitant, Dr. Jared, to come out with this message. But uh, since COVID started, the veracity of that message has certainly been proved objectively because uh, uh, I challenge anyone out there to uh, find uh, a health system or other employer who has told their frontline troops that they can do with a lesser amount of PPE for whatever reason, and then have a picture of a senior leader on the floor doing personal care. And uh, the reason why I don't want you to spend much time on it is because you won't find it. Uh, It's nowhere to uh, be found. It is absolutely (laughs) nowhere to be found. So uh, taking that experience, uh, I gradually transitioned to another passion of mine, which was to help patients do better by helping their clinicians do better. And so for clinicians who still want to stay employed but are looking to get ahead, I help them with Medicare Advantage. For the clinicians who still want to be clinicians but don't want to be employed, I help them transition into non-traditional roles like telemedicine, uh, cash pay practices, that sort of thing. And for clinicians that just do not want to practice anymore, then I mentor them in, in, that, uh, in, in that transition. So I try to keep a broad spectrum of services available to ta- be tailored to uh, anybody's needs. And, and as I've been in the telemedicine space uh, uh, since 2012 in one way or the other, uh, since COVID came up, uh, I've also been um, associating with organizations to help them make the pivot in a value-based way, um, if I can talk corporate talk, uh, to, uh, to telemedicine so that they can, they can take care of their patients. So you now I got my fingers in a lot, of, uh, a lot of pies, and the reason for that is when one revenue stream dries up, there's always another one to take its place. Credentials verified. As you guys are listening to him speak, you notice how he has developed and used his expertise in a number of different ways. And, and even more importantly, he says, Hey, at the end of the day, if something's not working out in one of my revenue lines, something else can pick up. And telemedicine is just one of those examples. I mean, we've known about it and practiced it for a long, long time. However, now the demand for telehealth is through the roof because everybody wants to stay home. They don't want to go to doctor's offices. It's really a a revolutionary approach to them not being able to find enough doctors out there to manage video calls, to manage telephone lines. So there's, there's again, opportunity out there. Well, tell me this, Tom, have you ever been dissed in your career? Well, when I said the corporate world uh, was not a good fit to me, I, I can point to two things. One is uh, is really is really uh, 
accounts to my own personal ego. Uh, and that is, you know, I, I was a, a, I was a top physician for my former employer, the people that we merged with. And, and I did a really good job and I generated an enormous amount of value. And I know that because I kept track of my own metrics. And, you know, when I said I was leaving, it was okay, that's fine. And uh, um, that, you know, you got to be careful because part of that pricked my ego. Uh, and then, you know, as my wife says, and everybody should have a spouse to hold them on the straight and narrow, says, well, you don't, you didn't want a big scene. You didn't want them to try to keep you. It's like, yeah, you're right. Uh, <laughs> but on the other hand, it's like, wow, you know, I, I know as a frontline troop, not just based on the, re- not just based on the referrals that I made and the volume that I saw, but just based on the revenue I generated through all these contracts that we brought with, I know exactly how, ma- how many millions of dollars I left without a boo. And I can promise you that that revenue hasn't been replaced. And so, you know, I put that together with uh, my other business experience and really what came to the conclusion is solid evidence of something I've suspected for a long time, Dr. Jarek. And that is for these large health systems, most of the practice of medicine is at best a break-even proposition. Uh, and for most, it's a, it's a lost leader to get folks into other revenue streams. And as such, you know, uh, that, that's fine for them. But all I have to sell on a clinical level is my expertise and my relationships. And if I'm working for somebody for whom, eh, you know, it's a lost leader. We don't really care about that. Well, how am I going to maximize my value? And how am I going to maximize the value to my patients? And, and how am I going to maximize my, my life if I'm working for that organization? Forget that. And if there's one message that uh, I'd love to send out today is that um, for most clinicians in most circumstances, your services are an afterthought. You are there to drive foot traffic to your office, to drive referrals to the very few high margin procedures that the, uh, that the system does, and uh, to use your credibility to extract high value of personal information from your patients so it can be resold, anonymized, and in bulk but, uh, you know, let's face it, it's all, all, also being sold with identifiers. I, I don't have any specific uh, instance I can point to. But if you don't think that it's being sold with identifiers, I think you're, you're being tremendously naive. <laughs> those, are the, uh, those are the service lines, the commercial real estate uh, stemming from the foot traffic and the resale of information. And then a couple of really high margin uh, procedures. You as a pediatrician, as a family doctor, as a gastroenterologist, I mean, even colonoscopies are not a high margin thing, okay? Your, your skills are being sold at a loss. And consequently, the people running the show at the very top, yeah, they, they don't really care. Um, <laughs> and, and, and as long as you internalize that that's your position, it makes it very easy to start looking around for a change of circumstance. You're absolutely right. In in fact, I've been telling people and lots of guests have been telling people as well that when it comes to this type of relationship from the systems, from the owners, it's always business and not personal, even though your personal life is often affected. They're running a business. And so if things don't work out, things aren't making money well. Just, just as you said, Tom, yeah, that service line's not doing much. Maybe we don't need it now. Let's, let's just get rid of it. And when we talk about the dichotomy of let the good times roll and the sky is falling, and I talked about that back in episode 63, when we're talking about that dichotomy of the moods in the boardroom, when the sky is falling, a lot of stuff happens very, very quickly, which, which brings me to, to ask in the middle and, you know, varying ends of this COVID-19 pandemic, we've been talking about the perils and a lot of the changes that are coming that's completely disrupting healthcare. But Tom, you tell us that there really is an opportunity for many individuals and organizations for that matter. And, and you describe it as a transformational opportunity. So, so tell us a little bit more of how you see this pandemic is really going to transform a lot of things. Well, the idea here is is that individual clinicians have a tremendous talent stack uh, based on their experience, uh, their education, and their expertise. Unfortunately, we've been forced to sell it in a restricted marketplace under greater and greater regulation to, uh, to individuals who want us to do more and more in exchange for less and less. Once you can step out from that tightly regulated third-party payer system, 
not only will you be astonished at the value that you have, even in a post-COVID world, you will be very gratified at the quality of life that you lead. No matter what the economics looks at, no matter how much our currency is debased and there is an oversupply, um, when your particular talent stack is, in, uh, is rare, it will command a certain price. Now, that price is going to be different to everyone according to the blessings that God gave them, but it will be there. And your job as a clinician who's making this transition, either by force because uh, the deal has broken down and you've been laid off, or by choice because you see that, that you can't live without autonomy anymore, no matter what the reason is, you have to look around and say, okay, what, what's next? What can I do? But I want your listeners to know that they can do that with the confidence that their life experiences, their education, their credibility that comes from being able to earn a medical degree is infinitely rare. And all it takes is a little is a little forward thinking and continued former forward momentum and perseverance. And you can make just a good living as you did uh, as a physician. And if you factor in the lifestyle, way, way better. <laughs> well, well, that certainly sounds like an opportunity that many people will be looking for, because if you've been kind of ground up in the middle of how this whole pandemic started and you've been working really hard, you may be looking for a break and you may be looking for other opportunities. So make sure you're keeping your eyes open because there are opportunities out there for everyone. You just have to kind of break yourself out of the mold of just thinking I am a clinician and that's the only thing I do to, well, yes, a clinician is part of what I can do, but I do what I want to do. That's correct. And, and if I, I had one recommendation for clinicians who are, are have decided to make the journey, but are, are haven't taken that first step. I mean, the people are right are you know, pre-contemplative and contemplative. So if you've already made the decision, yeah, I got to do something, but I don't know where to start. The very first thing is, of course, because we're all clinicians and we're all overeducated, is to read a book. And the book you want to read is something called Transitions, Making Sense of Life's Changes by William Bridges. Uh, it applies to transitions of all sorts, uh, but it uses individual stories of people you know and people you've never heard of um, to show you the way uh, to journey forward uh, as you begin to make those changes and make you feel less alone. And so if there's one thing for people who have made the decision, that's the first place to start. And then uh, I have my copy. It's dog-eared. I, I, should, I should go over and get it. I read it at least once a year. I get something new out of it every year. Uh, and I certainly read parts of it when I hit a low spot. So buy that book, internalize it, read it, don't read the summary because without the stories, the lessons lose their power. But that would, that's a great first step. And by the way, I don't have any financial interest. Mr. Bridges is not a relative of mine. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, Tom, but I'm also going to co-sign that because I know it's right over my shoulder on uh, hey, it my is. bookshelf it is. too. <laughs> <laughs> so it's funny you said that. That was great. It, and, and it is a good book. You're going to take a lot from it. Uh, and, and now that you mentioned it again, I'm going to have to have to open it up myself and, and refresh my mind a little bit. Well, I interviewed Dr. John Jerica back in 2019, and we talked about a lot of things related to non-clinical careers. So I'll make sure I have the show and that episode in the show notes so you guys can take a listen. There are a lot of jewels dropped in that episode. Now I understand that you and Dr. Jerica have come up with a new collaboration. I am dying to hear more about that. So this is all pre-COVID. So last year, uh, you know, I was uh, I was sketching around during my strategic planning time, and it, it really struck me what a couple of uh, my uh, clients had told me is that the sales funnel, the the journey that a clinician has to take from making the decision all the way to um, completing their trans transition, if that ever happens, is really, a, a, is really a path with several very large steps that you have to climb uh, before you get to the next level. In other words, you know, you kind of go along the internet and then maybe you find some, some mentors or some information that's interesting. So you get on a social media site and you deal with their, uh, their free uh, portal and, and you know, the, the, the threads there disappear 
here and the, 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 the questions that you can ask and the number of uh, different folks you can interact with is very limited and very directed. And also, I mean, there's absolutely zero privacy. Yeah, for those of you who don't know, if you have a medium or large size health system that you work for, I guarantee you that there is a line item in their budget where they pay a system to extract every single character that you type into their so these social media sites, and they periodically send your boss a report so they can look at it. I promise you that that is happening. And it doesn't matter uh, what, what site it is. You know, none of those sites are private, and that's one of the ways they make money. So, you know, there's privacy concerns there. Uh, and then from that interaction, suddenly you got to pay you know a thousand dollars to engage with this person, or you got to go you pay three thousand and take a take a weekend off of work uh, to uh, to go to a, a national convention. That's a huge jump. So you know, uh, uh, John interviewed me a couple of times on his podcast, and so I called him up and and we wrestled with the idea. And, and the thought was is to provide a place where clinicians who are seeking can interact with mentors who uh, professionally help folks in their transition in a variety of non-clinical and non-traditional uh, uh, careers. Uh, we made it a, a, a forum. We hosted it offsite in our own servers. So the privacy issue is much less important. It's much less an issue, I should say. And uh, um, we, uh, we charge a nominal fee every month, a subscription fee, uh, because experience teaches if you pay for something, you'll actually, uh, you'll actually use it and engage with it. So that's a, a persuasion tactic to try to pull people along. But aside from that, the, the site is made uh, by John and I. We're made by clinicians, for clinicians. Our core mission is to, again, help clinicians uh, serve their patients better by making them better. And uh, in this site, which is, uh, uh, which is getting ready to go to the hard launch phase, is really a great way for an individual clinician who's seeking uh, to interact with dozens of mentors across all disciplines, as well as their peers uh, in a private uh, kind of virtual clinician's lounge. But the difference here, Dr. Jarrett, is in this clinician lounge, no administrator has put an Alexa in there to eavesdrop on your conversation, <laughs> which I've seen happen. Uh, and not more and not once. I think somebody went to a seminar and they introduced that tactic. And then suddenly I'm having people call me from across the country. Should I trust the Alexa in the doctor's lounge? It's like, well, that's why nobody goes in there. Uh, but that's not the case in this place. This place is a, is a great kind of value added way so that you can really find who's a good fit. And, and, and take that next step more gradually as opposed to making it a big jump. It's called Clinicians Cooperative. And, uh, you know, it's always, as always, we're looking for uh, ideas to improve it. But really, its primary mission there is by doctors, by, by clinicians to serve clinicians. And so it's, uh, it's a tool for, for you. It sounds like a great opportunity for people to do a little more self-exploration with a lot more privacy than, than you do. And, and I chuckled listening to your stories about the physician's lounge, because as I would sit in there many days, uh, just to kind of get out there and talk with some of the folks, I'd just be amazed at how open people would be talking and talking about other people or administrators. And then an administrator will come walking right in there uh, and they would have already had the information about the topic of conversation. So the privacy is very important. And I know that's going to bring great value to people. And I'll leave information about that collaborative in the show notes for you. Well, Dr. Tom, this has been... Uh, great time talking with you, but I want people to know where they can find you. So I have a, a number of different portals across a, a spectrum of services. The easiest way is to simply connect with me on LinkedIn and, and message, message me through there. Uh, I'm, I'm very easy to find. You can also email me at uh, Tom at Tom Davis consulting.com. Uh, among the different tactics that I, I work in to help people, um, uh, practice medicine outside the system is that I mentor clinicians into how to create and run their own telemedicine practice uh, as an independent contractor. I've been doing that for years. And uh, you can go to telemedicinemastery.com to uh, experience kind of the first uh, the first interactions. There's also a, a paid course in there. It's a very nominal fee uh, to kind of get your get, uh, dip your finger, or dip your toe into the, into the water there. Uh, telemedicine is a huge opportunity that many clinicians are taking advantage of now here in the 
the post COVID world. Um, when one client told me, you were really lucky you got in this so early. It's like, well, luck had nothing to do with it. It was, you know, <laughs> it was all ready to go. Uh, but uh, uh, in this situation there, Dr. Jarrett, um, uh, I, uh, I mentor these folks on how to do it sustainably and how to do it safely as well as how to do it efficiently enough so that you can double your hourly wage. And that is not a, uh, that is not a wasteful boast. In fact, if you have a moment, I'll tell you about my little controlled trial that I did in uh, 2016, as I was still employed, I put, I, I uh, did the numbers and I worked 200 hours that month I saw 400 uh, compensated encounters and I, uh, and for those 200 uh, compensated or 400 compensated encounters for the average doctor, I would have um, generated about $20,000 in gross revenue. It's 200 hours, 400 uh, uh, encounters and about $20,000 in January of 2017. I decided, okay, I'm going to do 200 hours in my telemedicine practice that I custom designed for myself. And in those 200 hours during January, I had 1,600 paid encounters. And uh, I perform, and I generated $40,000 in gross revenue. Now, I, I would never recommend wow. anyone to spend their life doing uh, 1,600 encounters a month. It was a proof of concept. Uh, <laughs> and really, I spend 50 to 100 hours uh, a, a month on there. And I, you know, I generate, uh, you know, $10,000 a month or so. And that's just cause it's limited, but Dr. Jared, I, I do that, you know, in a, in a HIPAA compliant private setting, but it's at the beach and it's in my beach clothes or up on a mountain. <laughs> I've done it in a glacier. I've done it in, uh, on a balcony in Naples. I've done it in Iceland. I mean, I've done it in Alaska. Uh, and, uh, one, I also did a proof of concept where I paid for an entire Alaskan cruise for myself, just doing telemedicine a couple hours a day. So, um, you know, that mobility is very gratifying because it allows clients to take a step back from their hectic life and still support their lifestyle so they can make some decisions. So that's telemedicinemastery.com. Uh, I also represent a, a company called Wow health solutions, uh, which you can access through wow.healthcare. Uh, these are for clinicians who want to take a shift outside of the system and, and create their own cash pay micro practice. It can be direct primary care modeled, or it can be your own personal model. Uh, but to do that, you know, it's very intimidating because you need to select and create and develop your own uh, practice support tools. And wowhealthsolutions.com really uh, takes care of all that for you. Their portal is uh, completely free. And when I say free, I mean really free. You're not the product. Uh, and basically what it is is a marketplace uh, to promote the creation of uh, or the development of the uh, exchange of uh, health care for cash. And uh, uh, the inventor, a guy named Dr. Jawad Arshad, is a genius. His name, again, is Gerard Arshad. You remember that because he's going to be on the uh, cover of Forbes here pretty soon, uh, undoubtedly. And not only has he created this, uh, this marketplace for cash pay, uh, the cash payment of healthcare services, he's also created a, a system, covered systems, which will promote the growth of it. And so uh, I, I work with that organization uh, to uh, help uh, promote both sides of the, uh, of the coin. I, I work with large companies and brokers to get their employees uh, covered under the system because it's so much cheaper than regular insurance. And then I also help uh, encourage clinicians to start posting their prices. And because it's free with no contracts, no network, no agreements of any kind, uh, and uh, you collect 100% of the uh, price that you post, it really is a pretty easy sell. So I do that. And then I also work with clinicians who want to leverage their professional relationships with their peers to get them to sign up to uh, on uh, uh, Wow Healthcare so that uh, um, they can generate a, uh, a, uh, a revenue stream uh, that's completely passive for themselves. And a lot of uh, many times the first non-clinical revenue stream for uh, doctors to cut their teeth on is something like this something where they uh, learn that they can monetize uh, their relationships, their credibility outside the system, but do it in a way that does everybody good. And so that's also an opportunity I, I, uh, 
I offer through that. I'll, I'll put all that stuff uh, in the uh, in the show notes. Um, the lesson here, though, is, is that none of this existed when I decided to do this years ago. None <laughs> of this existed. And two years from now, I have no idea where my next dollar is going to come from. That's the only that's the only <laughs> lesson. The the only thing that sets me apart from most of the people who are still working is that I I, I put my foot forward. I took the first step. And that is literally the only difference, okay? Because in my situation, I'm not smart enough to fix healthcare, Dr. Jarrett, but what I can do is pay my good fortune forward to create environment for those who come behind me who are smart enough to make a difference. And if that's all I do, then uh, all of this will be time well spent. Final judgment. Licensed to live. I can't agree with you more because, well, in that statement, folks, you may have to rewind and there will be in the show notes. There are a number of opportunities for you to take. And just like Dr. Tom says, he says, you got to take one foot forward in front of the next. You have to take that first step. That's what's um, uh, the most important thing for you to bring yourself along and to take yourself along this journey. It's not going to happen for you. Nobody else is going to do it for you. You need to be in charge. You need to take that first step. Thanks, Tom, for coming on the show today. You delivered, uh, you, you stand true to what you stand behind, which is value. You brought a tremendous amount of value to the show today. Is there anything else that you'd like to tell our audience today? Just do it. You're, just do it. <laughs> what more can I say? That is it. Thank you, Tom, for being on the show today. Thanks for joining License to Live. Thank you for having me. It's been a privilege. Remember, Firestarters, if you or anyone you know has been dissed, disengaged, dissatisfied, disgruntled, disenfranchised with healthcare, please invite them to join us along this journey. Just go to your favorite podcast player and subscribe. While you're there, just give us a review. Make sure we are giving you what you want to hear in the way that you want to hear so I can provide you with the most up-to-date information about career challenges and life changes. And make sure if you're not connected with me on LinkedIn, I tend to hang out there in between episodes. And you heard Tom, Tom Davis, Dr. Tom Davis. He is there as well. Connect with both of us on LinkedIn. Uh, and, and that's a great way to engage with us. So until then, continue to stay safe and stand strong and see you next time. No matter how disheartening the moment of accusation sounds, how deep the pain of immobilization stabs, or how bleak your future looks, no one can take away your license to live. Keep Dr. Jarrett's expertise handy and unlock your future. Go to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or another podcast player and subscribe right now to Licensed to Live. See you next time.